some sages say there is no tikkun for it. There is no tikkun for being immoral. There is no tikkun for, for committing adultery. For a woman to commit adultery, there is no tikkun for it. But to the best of our abilities, she can fast every single day for three years, every day until night, only eat at night for three years straight, wear black for the rest of her life, never put any makeup on, never put on any jewelry, uh, never look beautiful, uh, uh, never talk to anybody, be in the corner, publicize her sin to the women that, to, to show everybody that she's a zona. I mean, if I told you guys what the sages say about women that sin an adulterous relationship, literally you would shake uncontrollably, even if you're a guy, even if you're a guy, because needless to say, it means the same thing for, for guys, for other sins that they make. So people have no concept, no concept of how deep the judgment is. And we're not talking about fanatic people. We're not talking about only one saint said it. We're talking about across the board. Anyone that talked about the process of tshuva, anyone that talked about tikkunim and things of that nature, literally, it's, it's earth shattering. It's earth shattering what the tshuva process really is for certain people. And people think, oh no, listen, I'll just put on a nicer dress. I'll just get a shorter wig. I'll give $18 a month to Rabbi Ruven, and that's it, I'm a tzaddika. It doesn't work like that, Habibi. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. I'm telling you, Rabbi if you only understood, understood half the stuff that I've ever learned in my life, you would think that I'm not speaking strong enough. You would say, Rabbi, why don't you say the truth? You call me a liar. That's what you'd say to me. If I understood everything that's out there, I'd call myself a liar.